Okay, we made up a wee bit of a simulation here just to show you how to take care of um, salts when it occurs and it comes out of the mortar. What we see here, I've used a wee bit of white paint just to uh, demonstrate and we'll put it into the joint and then it smears of course all over the rock and makes unsightly stains. So what we'd like to do is um, first of all touch up the pointing. So I'm just going to show you what we use for that. Um, basically what we have to do is represent what the original shade was. So it takes a wee bit of experimentation, that's probably harder to do than the actual stone um, because uh, colours change according to days and temperatures and what have you. So you've just got to be thinking as you do this and just a few little trials. All we need for this is some primal. The primal will be at a ratio of 20% primal to 80% water, so it's quite diluted. We need some plain cement. Always very fresh cement is, is required. Uh, and some black oxide. Okay, we start off by um, mixing these together. Okay, we're going to start off by putting a wee bit of um, primal into the container for a start off. We're not going to use tiny amounts for this, so it doesn't take much. Probably too much even there. Okay, that's all we need. We're going to put a wee bit of cement in there. We want to get it to a sort of a pasty consistency. Then we're going to look at our shade and we're just going to have to try and match that. We more cement, it's a wee bit too runny. Okay, and then we're going to take a little bit of black oxide. Start off with a tiny little bit. We're just going to mix that in until we feel that we're getting somewhere near to the shade that we're after. Now, there's only one way to do this and that's trial and error. So we're just going to mix that up. We're going to say now, is that lighter or darker? Now if it's just a few little spots, we can probably do it with a brush. If it's quite a large area, it's much faster to do it for a spray gun. So I'm going to show you both, just to give you an idea of the two different systems there. Looks to me just to be, if I just put a wee bit on my finger, dab it on a bit of the mortar. Actually, I'm closer than I thought, so there you go. Um, so I'm just going to, it's just a fraction dry there, I'm just going to add a little bit more primal. Try and get it up into the system about that. Don't have your brush loaded too much, you just want to do a couple of light coats over the area as best. Get a wee bit on the stone, don't worry, because we're going to be touching that up anyway. Now, it's much easier to overcoat to get rid of salts than what it is to try and use acids. The acids can be quite, uh, quite a problem at times, so they do have their place, but for ease and getting it right most times, you won't beat this system. I've covered that quite easy. Uh, when it dries, you know, there's always the possibility that it might dry the wrong shade, so you've just got to keep an eye on that. If you think it's not quite right, you might have to just add a wee bit more oxide and just touch that up. I'm pretty happy with that. Looking a thousand, a thousand times better than it was. Here's the spot we've done there, it's the spot we haven't done. Okay, we're just going to show you what we've got here for uh, covering over the stone here. Uh, we've got a wee kit here which we can supply when people have the odd problem, they just let us know. First of all, again, the primal, 20% primal, 80% water, really critical. Too heavy in the primal, you'll have problems, and not enough, you'll have problems, so make sure you get that right. Uh, We've got some plain cement and oxide, should we need to do some touching up if we need to for the, the jointing. Now, this is the main thing we have here, is called our face dyes. These are uh, present on the stone when we do our colouring, so therefore we can give you the same shade exactly, so we always start off with a grey base, just about on everything. So that's our Queenstown grey face dye. 
and we have our terrace face die and our brown face die. Now you'll notice the stone here, we've got a mixture of all colours. So um, we'll start off with doing some grey and then we'll bring some highlights of some of the other colours over for that. Clean container. First of all we just uh, grab our spoon. We don't need very much at all so uh, to do this, it's tiny amounts. So probably a spoonful is, will be heaps for me. Um, and I'm just going to dribble a wee bit of primal into there which is already mixed. Okay, so we've just dribbled a wee bit in there, just grab a wee spatula, mix it up. We don't want it too runny, um, it wants to be just a little bit on the firm side, so we're just going to dribble a wee bit more into there. Until we get it right, you can see the colour there, of course, is perfect, so um, every time. So see, it's just starting to get a wee bit stiff now. And here's one of the most important parts, is just using the right kind of brush. We don't want to put thick paint all over the stuff, you know, the paint is too heavy. It's more like sort of um, putting makeup, just so you're brushing on and just highlighting in spots to take off the, the problem areas. So I'm going to use a brush that, see how it's fairly, fairly old and had it, but this is actually perfect for what we do. So we're just going to pick up a wee bit on the bristles. If you find it's not holding enough, you can just add a wee bit more moisture. Pick up a wee bit, and we're just going to give this a bit of a dust over here. So we're just See how I'm not trying to cover everything, just, just get what I need. This brush is probably a wee bit big for this one actually, but it's... See I'm covering that there. Got a good rubbing. Just a fraction dry, so I'll just wet up a wee bit more. Of course when you wet up it's always easy to overdo it, so... So now you see I'm doing grey over everything at this stage. Now we're going to make up a different face dye for a couple of the other stones. Already as that dries out, you can see it's just disappearing. But we've still got a lot of tricks up our sleeve yet. Want any particles, I just want to sort of smooth it off so it all comes back up smooth again. Way. Try a wee brush and just see how we go with that one. Yeah, it's not too bad actually for a little getting into those little areas, quite like that. Okay, so now we're done with grey and we've pretty much covered most things. Still a wee couple of the marks here, I'm not too row because we've got a couple more colours to come in there yet. So I'm going to use a wee bit of terrace this time because there is some stone in this one that has got terrace on it, uh, but not many. And then I'll go for a wee bit of brown. So just perhaps a, a flick of terrace. Just such a small amount, I might just dip my brush in actually just to mix into the terrace. And then I just put too much, too much on. You can see that it's, it's just such tiny amounts that's needed. Unless you've got big areas to do, but even then I'd mix it in small amounts and just keep on adding to it. We've done fix-up jobs like this where we've had a bit of salts before for, and done it for people. And uh, half an hour later, you couldn't see where we've been. And um, clients are always just absolutely wrapped. It goes from such a change. So I've got a wee bit of terrace. I'm just going to brush that on there. I'll use that wee one, I might try a different technique here. I'll use the wee one just to put a bit on in the odd place. Try and just make it a bit stony, try not to uh, follow too much of a, a pattern. Okay, so what that's going to do is when we do our later colouring stages, the different colours are going to react differently and that'll just create all the, uh, all the variation that we need to, to make up a good stone. That's all that all that needs. In fact, uh, it's really easy to go too much. I'm probably bad for it. I don't know when to leave it alone sometimes. So, I'm just going to take a wee bit of a wee bit of shade onto there. Suddenly, it starts breaking that grey up. Right, we'll wash my pot out. Ready for the next colour. Okay, so I've got a wee bit of brown. Some 
to that. Wee bit this time. Wee bit of primal. And again, too much. You can just see how it's so easy just to put too much. I just want it to be so it's just starting to stiffen up a wee bit. I don't want it too runny and gooey. That's as, probably as runny as I'd like. Actually, I quite like this wee brush. I might change to that now. Now, what I'm going to try and do though is just sort of not rub like that. I want to just overdo it like this. So there's my brown going on. So that one was a grey stone. I'm not even going to bother there. This one had a wee bit of other colour in there too. So just as that starts to dry, we polish it off with our fluffy brush. So it starts to dry there now. So I'm just going to just merges it all out and make see how that straight away just starts to look better. Okay, just take a wee bit more there. This is a sample board and I guarantee by the time we've finished I can put it back out into the room and use it as display stone and no one could tell the difference that they have white paint on it before. Already it's getting pretty hard. I can see a little bit of, it's actually not the paint, but I might just tidy out a couple of little marks there. Oops. Put on the grey stone. There we go. See a wee bit just down in there. If you've got just Queenstown grey, of course, just you know, a basic thing, then all it's really easy. You just need to use the grey, and possibly just a little bit of terrace just to cover over, you know, to merge the uh, the shades a wee bit, but but very very little. Okay, that's that stage all finished. All we have to do now is give it a bit of time. It needs to set still, so we're going to give that. Uh, you know, if it's a warm day, you might get away with it in a couple of hours. Not a bad idea to come back a day later though. Okay, what we're going to do now, this is dried off a wee bit. Um, it's still a wee bit fresh, uh, fresh, but for the sake of the video, we'll um, just get that done for you anyway. So now we're going to do one of our tricks is, is, is to get a wee bit of the uh, staining acid that we use. So you get classic staining acid. We'll again supply a wee bit of that. This has to be used delicately. Just dribble a wee bit in. That would be enough to do several very large jobs. Uh, we've got a wee bit of just straight water in our trigger bottle, so we'll get that going. So first of all we need to just mist the area with a bit of, and just get it damp. Don't do it on dry stone. So I'm just going to cover those, I'm going to damp, dampen a wee bit of there. And I'm just going to add a wee bit of that, just in a few places. Just watch it dribbling down into the mortar there, I've probably made a wee mistake there. Um, so can be a bit of a nuisance. On a coloured stone I'm going to give it actually cover the whole thing there. Okay, this one here, just a wee bit less I'll use. Don't want to do everything, we're just sort of, we're adding pieces so that the, the eye is tricked, it just can't see where you've started and where you've finished, so for goodness sake don't go too much. I'm just touching that acid there and no more, so the only thing, I've got a brown stone here, so this one here can actually have a whole coat. Just come over that there. Now that takes a few minutes to react and to burn in, but it starts changing it things fairly quickly. So it's reacting with the cement, causing a chemical reaction and making a new shade and a new colour altogether. So um, you can just see there, you can see the pools of the acid starting to burn and, and sharpen up and do its thing. even more acid on that bit of plain stone there. Okay, you can see now that we're starting to get there, so it's looking pretty good. If you did have a bit of acid run onto the point then there's no reason why you couldn't just have a wee bit of clean water and just wash that off before it has a chance to burn in. So that stone's looking almost perfect. Acid's a great way to actually cover up stains because even if there's some salts there, it'll actually react with the salts. Sometimes if it's a, been a terrorist job, I actually just use the acid and just take over the salts and I recolour the salts. 
looks perfect. Uh, but different days you get different results, so you've got to just got to have a few tricks up your sleeve just to be able to take care of those. You can see now we're looking pretty good. Okay, now just as that acid burns off, this is a really important stage. Um, just going to tip my water out. We need to come back in with some of our black stain. So. Again, we'll supply this because it's, it's not your normal stain. I'm just going to tip that into there. Grab my sprayer. Okay, that's had about, uh, well, we say it's probably had, you know, a minute, a minute and a half, so it's just about there. I'll just squirt out the water until I get some black. Here we go. And I'm actually going to just cover. You know, you might even cover the whole piece of wall where you're working, but we'll just go lightly to start off. Even into the cracks, it won't hurt at all. And wherever we've put that acid on, it's just going to, uh, it's going to meld with the acid shades. And we're going to have a completely new piece of rock. Just a, just a point here to remember when you're doing anything with uh, touch-ups and that, make sure you mask up any glass and windows. It's just, you think you're saving time by just being careful and it always comes back and, and uh, catches you out and you end up with something on the glass and you spend more time trying to clean up any mess than you do doing the job. So um, just get that. Now that, that's going to take a little while to dry. When that's dry, we're going to do one more thing and that's just seal the stone so it's all locked in and it won't be able to be very difficult for it to salt again once we do the next stage. So that's the final point. Okay our black stain start to dry, it's coming up pretty good. There's a few spots I'm not quite happy with but I think it'll be pretty hard for people to actually pick. This here is a bit of a patch just in through here and that's probably because I've um, making the video just tried to go a wee bit too fast on doing the different stages, it should just have a wee bit of setting time in between. Uh, but I'll just spray that again with a wee bit of black and um, that'll probably just fix that anyway. So not too bad. Okay, it's starting to dry up now, it's still a fraction dark but it'll soon come right. Now we're going to do the final stage, just put the sealant on. Uh, the sealer is called uh, C309 and basically it does two things, it, it locks up any fresh mortar and it also um, puts just a, uh, a nice coat to protect the stone from efflorescence. All our stone is pre-coated with this before it leaves and uh, we're actually working on a spec now to have it also built into our whole system for doing jointing as well so that soon may solve a lot of problems with efflorescence. Okay, the uh, C3 we can just put on before we squirt a bottle again. Particular attention just to get into the cracks where it's uh, been a problem before. Oops, a black slime there. That's a good plate coat. This does make the stone look a fraction glossy for uh, a short time, probably up to a couple of months, but it soon, um, the protection that it gives is just far outweighs any negative. You just got to let your clients know that uh, it does come back again and um, in fact this is an excellent product just to uh, freshen the stone up every few years. And there we go, we've just got to wait for that to dry and we're finished. Here it is after it's sealed, it's uh, still looking a wee bit dark but um, it's just going to take a few hours for it to uh, merge back to where it should be and it'll look just the same as it was when we started.